there's always something happening in space exploration, and today we have a trio of topics from this field prepared for you. First, let's take a look at the final preparations for the new American rocket, Vulcan. In the second topic, we'll explore very successful photos of the moon Io, taken by the American probe Juno near Jupiter. The final topic will focus on the launch of Starlink satellites, including the first satellites with a new function. The first launch of the Vulcan rocket from the United Launch Alliance was supposed to be the highlight of the end of 2023. However, minor delays during preparation and testing pushed this anticipated launch into 2024. When all tests showed that the rocket was ready, its transport to the SLC-41 launch pad at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station could begin. Both the first and second stages of the Vulcan rocket underwent a series of tests at this pad in recent months. However, this time, the mobile launch platform carried the complete Vulcan rocket out of the assembly tower. In addition to the first and second stage, it is equipped with two solid rocket boosters and an aerodynamic fairing. The Vulcan rocket is about 62 meters tall, and its body has a diameter of 5.4 meters. It appears much more massive than the Atlas rockets, which are also being launched from this pad. Their central stage has a body diameter of 3.8 meters. On the launch pad, the rocket will undergo final preparations, and the first launch could take place on January 8th at 7.18 Universal Time. Meteorologists are currently promising good weather with an 85% probability. The upper stage of the rocket is set to perform three burns. The first will reach a parking orbit around Earth. The second burn will stretch this orbit towards the Moon, where the lunar lander Peregrine will head. The third burn will then direct the upper stage onto a heliocentric orbit around the Sun. We will surely return to this topic once the rocket launches. In the solar system, you won't find a celestial body more volcanically active than Jupiter's moon, Io. This moon, just slightly larger than our moon, hosts more than 400 active volcanoes. NASA operates the Juno probe, which has been orbiting Jupiter since 2016. Although originally intended to study only the Jupiter itself as part of its extended mission, it also conducts flybys of the moons. On December 30th, the Juno probe approached the moon Io at a distance of only 1,500 kilometers. Juno had never gotten this close to Io before. It was a unique opportunity for the JunoCam camera to capture images of this unique world. This image was taken at a distance of about 2,500 kilometers, with a surface resolution of 1.7 kilometers per pixel. Scientists aim to use the new photos of the moon Io for scientific research. They want to compare images of certain areas with photos taken by the Galileo and New Horizons probes several years ago. This could help identify differences and understand how the moon's volcanism is changing.
and what causes the strong volcanic activity on the moon Io. This fourth largest moon in the solar system orbits very close to Jupiter. The planet's very strong gravitational field literally needs the moon's innards. Internal friction generates heat, and magma finds its way to the surface. On January 3rd, at 3.44 Universal Time, nine Merlin rocket engines ignited at the Vandenberg base in California. Thanks to this, the SpaceX Falcon 9 could soar into the sky. As part of the Starlink 7-9 mission, 21 Starlink satellites flew into orbit. But beware, unlike previous missions, this time there was something different. 15 satellites fell among the common second-generation mini-satellites. However, the remaining six were much more interesting. They were the first satellites with a new feature for direct communication with mobile phones. This new type of satellite is built on the same satellite platform as other Starlink satellites. The new service is not active yet. First, a sufficient number of satellites will need to be launched to enable it. The direct connection service could be launched later this year. If successful, the direct-to-cell service could completely eliminate areas without mobile connectivity worldwide. The goal is not to compete with established operators in developed areas. The new Starlink direct-to-cell service targets users in less developed areas. The service will offer a maximum data transfer speed of only 7 megabits per second, but even that is a significant improvement for many remote locations. Any phone with LTE capability should be able to connect, regardless of brand. All that's needed is a view of the sky. No additional hardware or software will be required. The Falcon 9's first stage was used for the first time this time, which is somewhat unusual for Starlink satellite launches. Usually, many more used stages fly with this payload. The mission's conclusion was standard. The first stage softly landed on the sea platform, Of Course I Still Love You, which was waiting in the Pacific Ocean. Thank you for your attention to today's episode of Spaceflight News. We are delighted in your interest in space news, and to ensure you do not miss future episodes, kindly consider subscribing to our channel. Additionally, you can find other interesting news on our profile on Social Network X, formerly known as Twitter. The link can be found in the video description.